tuned in to the Community Cats Podcast. Ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Community Cats Podcast. I am your host, Stacey LeBaron. I've been involved helping homeless cats for over 20 years with the Merrimack River Feline Rescue Society. The goal of this podcast is to expose you to amazing people who are improving the lives of cats. I hope these interviews will help you learn how you can turn your passion for cats into action. And today we are speaking with Janice Cobb of Zinzi Pie and Save My Pet ID Tag. Janice, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Thanks, Stacy. I'm honored to be here. So first and foremost, I ask all of my guests, how did you become passionate about cats? Um, My parents told me that I I was born wanting a cat. I think that was pretty much nearly true. They were afraid that if I got a cat, a cat would claw or bite me. Cats are said to have five weapons of mass destruction from your previous podcast. That lovely lady presented was great. They do. They've got their teeth and they've got claws on four paws. But I met my first cat as a consequence or met, interacted with on a deep, deep level. When my dog was taken to Philadelphia Hospital for Animals, um, she had been hit by a a bus and needed a wedge osteotomy. So this was the place it was done where the doctors worked on racehorses. So I was probably about five years old when we went and stayed on a farm run by Amish people called Robin Run Farm. And I remembered... There was a beautiful, beautiful cat. He seemed like he was the size of a bus to me (laughs) when I was five, but he was called Old Tom. And I was told, don't go near Old Tom. He'll scratch your eyes out. He's a tough mouser. He's a barn cat. Well, I knew right away. Tom and I had an understanding and there was no doubt. I went over to Tom and he was too big to pick up. So I dragged him over to a a low slung hammock, picked him up, put him on my lap. And he began to drool and purr and nuzzle and make little biscuits on me. And I knew at that point that this was absolutely the best that life could ever offer. That's fantastic. And I begged and begged and begged for a cat. And finally, for my first Holy Communion, my cousin got me a cat. And she was wonderful. I couldn't believe that she was going to live with me. She was long-haired, orange tabby. And she was so lovely. She slept with me. And she was very young and my parents didn't know any better. And she came home with kittens and I loved them too, very, very much. But she was an amazing cat. In those days, the early sixties, she, um, she was an indoor outdoor cat. She would swim. She would catch fish. She was an amazing cat. But I, for me, cats were extra special. They, they always were. And when you're living with a family as a child, Your cat is like a brother or a sister to you. But when you get to be older and now you're moving out of the nest, in this case, my first thought of independence and how the cat is dependent on me came when I was in graduate school at University of Alaska Fairbanks of all places. Fairbanks, Alaska is a very serious place regarding its environment. The temperatures in the summer are 100 degrees and in the winter, as you know, it can get down to minus 70. So the the big question, though, is what if you never come home? Now, even though I thought I came up with this idea in the 2000s, when I had come across a day runner that I had, as everyone seemed to have had in the 90s, looks like a giant notebook, and every day you write something in there. In the front of the notebook, I'd written, I have a 21-year-old hypertensive diabetic cat. If the owner of this notebook is found non-responsive, This is the number of my veterinarian. So all of a sudden, in those days, that thought was formulated. It never went further than that, at least initially, but right away. What's going to happen to Fally B if I'm not there to prick her paw pad, figure out how much insulin she's going to get, and and just she's going to be devastated. They don't understand the future. They understand the now. They understand where's mommy. She's not here. There was a a movie I'd not yet seen with a man who he habitually comes home via train station and his dog would always run out to meet him. And when the man died, the dog kept going back. That's really it. Above and beyond their physical care, they need love. 
They need love. They are love engendering machines. They are love giving machines of an unconditional nature. That's all they want to do is love you. My, my boy Roy here is a prime example. Whenever I, whenever I sit down, there he is, my boy Roy. Even when I come home, I make sure that I don't bring stressors with me. I don't listen to a podcast, no offense. I don't listen to a podcast or anything. I'm with them. This is their time now. I talk with them, their vibes. They know these things. They're far more sensitive than we are. They know. Can I just, I'm going to pause you one little second there, because that's a very powerful statement that you said that you don't bring the stress home with you. How do you do that? How do you ensure that? There are so many of us that are involved with day-to-day stress from our work environment, from our colony caretaking environment. We have our colony cats. We have our house cats. We have the cats that we deal with in our adoption centers. And then we also have just regular work. And then we volunteer to do all of this stuff, you know, in the off hours. How do we ensure we're not bringing that home to our cats? Well, I kickbox for six days a week. That's part of it at Club CK Warwick. But there's another part too. When I come home and I see them right away, that's all it takes. It's kind of ironic. Um, in my townhouse, I had envisioned I'd spend most of my time on the first floor. I've got my books down there. I've got my modem down there. And I was thinking, well, this will be my workstation. And then I'll come upstairs and then be with my family. That's not how it works. All I have to do is be home. And my big one, Mr. Big Stuff, who's 26 pounds, jumps over the fence, run downstairs to meet me. And he starts to body slam into the door. He knows I'm there. And he's desperate to be with me. He wants to be with me. He loves me. Even when I'm just going downstairs to check on the laundry, he'll still jump the fence and he'll still want to be with me. That, that just knocks everything else out. Everything else that, that you thought was important is not important anymore. Now, all of a sudden, you see these beautiful creatures who love you unconditionally and who want nothing more than for you to hold them. I, I, love, my, I love each of them in a very special way. Harley is a very big cat. And I I pick him up and dance with him. And that's what he wants. He puts his paws on my shoulders and I start dancing. I got me a cat. He's as big as a whale. He sits about 40 and he's ready to sail. He loves that. And I love it with him. One of the things that when we were talking um, before starting, you you had also mentioned that that the daytimer, your calendar. And Mm -hmm. in that calendar, you had mentioned the importance of you know, if somebody found this and I'm incapacitated, you know, these, this is my cat, my cat has this situation. There are so many situations where we were microchipping our cats, we're putting collars on our cats with ID tags, all of this other stuff. But honestly, Janice, you're the first person that I've ever met who's thought about the flip side, which is, you know, People wear medical ID tags for their own medications. If I can't represent myself, these are the medications that I'm on. But there's also, you know, who's dependent on me? Who is depending on having me come home? We have cats. We have family members who may be incapacitated or, you know, I think of someone with dementia at home. You know, we take care of so many of our family members. And you just, through your program here, I just get thinking about how important it is that we have on our person almost a listing of who's worried, who would be in trouble if we weren't able to come home at night. It's everything. It's everything. Are They're helpless without us. Yes, they have food for the day. Every bowl has a different flavor of wet food. Um, they have two forms of kibble. One is chicken egg, the other is duck. They have three fountains and water. That's fine, but that will stop if I'm not there and no one knows that they are here. Who's going to tell them? In our world, in our workaday world, we're not as connected as we used to be in generations past. No one would know. No one would know. I have a friend who who sent me a a dress for my birthday. It's beautiful. But she says, oh, I I want a picture of you, but there's nobody to take it. That's how isolated we become in our workaday world, particularly now post-COVID. We're now back in school. We're now back at our jobs. We're out and about continuously. And if anything were to happen, because you never know, I actually proved firsthand that this does work. 
I had an attack of something called labyrinthitis. It's another word for hell. What happens is a virus goes into one of your ears. And as you probably know from anatomy and studying with cats, we have cranial nerves, the first part of the periphery. And the cranial nerves, we have, we have 12 pairs, one on the left, one on the right. And the vestibular cochlear nerve is the one that innervates the ear. So in this case, the inflammation happened from my right vestibular cochlear nerve, cranial nerve eight. And the messages that it was relaying back to my brain were not the same as the ones coming from the left. So I was hit with profound vertigo. I opened my eyes and the room was a blur. And all I did was vomit. I couldn't stop vomiting. I couldn't, I couldn't move. Anything I did to move was an aggravation. I was piled onto a gurney and taken to the hospital. My blood pressure tripled. It tripled. It was 204 over 103. And I had cats at home, four of them. What was I going to do? This is what I was going to do. First thing they did was see this. And after they gave me Reglin and Zofran, which stopped the vomiting, but not the nausea, I just was saying, my cats, my cats. I looked to my side and there was my best friend. There she was. She was called immediately because her contact information, her email and cell phone right on the back here. So for those of us who were, aren't able to see us on Zoom, you have developed Save My Pet ID Tag. And I believe, can you just, for those of us who are listening while they're driving, describe what it is and how many different versions of it you have. You were showing me a necklace version, but I believe you have other versions too. Oh, so, yeah. so describe to us what it is and how, and that you just described sort of how it works. And then how are the different formats that we can have that as part of our day-to-day -day carrying around of, of our okay. stuff? Sure. The original concept was the necklace and it is very much derived from the Medic Alert jewelry. In fact, R&D manufacturing in Paw, Tucket, Rhode Island, manufactures it for me, stainless steel, all made in the USA. And the pendant was the first one. And then I went into a keychain version, which is very popular, and then into a bracelet version, which instead of the medical caduceus has a little paw print. And it is very much in line with the medical alert. If you have an insulin pump, or if you have stents in your heart, you're not going to put a little note in your wallet and hope someone sees it or on your cell phone. You're going to wear it on your body. You're going to wear it on your body. So it's the first thing people will see and notice. So it just depends on personal preference. I have all three. I've got the keychain. I've got the bracelet. The bracelet, the necklace never comes off, never comes off. I'm always wearing it because you never know. And really the, in the heart of every pet owner is what if I never came home? People will never go that deep in themselves. That's their biggest fear. If they're really pet parents and they love their pets, what if you never came home? You don't know. You'll never know. With the holidays right around the corner, curl up with a furry friend and a copy of the new book, How Snowball Stole Christmas by Kristen McKenna. The adorably funny brand new novel featuring one very opinionated, very beautiful matchmaking cat named Snowball. The story is as cute as the cover. It's the perfect stocking stuffer. Clever scallywag of a cute as a button cat residing in a small town, Victorian B&B, &B, and matchmaking on the down low, bringing two hearts together all wrapped up like a pretty Christmas bow on a creamy white cat named Snowball. There's no end to the way Snowball can drum up trouble to bring two people together who start out despising each other. This floof will stop at nothing to make the perfect holiday match for her resident humans, even if it means being a little more naughty than nice. Just in time for the holidays, How Snowball Stole Christmas from Kensington Books is available everywhere books are sold. It's a great read. <coughs> Team Dubert is at it again, and now they have an amazing companion case management module that once again revolutionizes how you rescue animals. Dubert partnered with Dallas Pets Alive and the Spay Neuter Network to build a powerful solution that allows you to manage cases of any kind. Whether owner surrender calls or emails, community cat tracking and reporting, Dubert is the only system that integrates two way text messaging, automatic follow ups, and even a rehoming solution that every organization can use. 
No more trying to manage 10 different technologies when everything is all in one place and tightly integrated. From fostering to transport, fundraising to e-commerce, supply and demand to case management, Dubert has everything you need to streamline your operations so you can focus on saving more animals. Check out the new companion case management module at www.dubert.com slash CCM and get signed up today. Ever wanted to quickly connect, collaborate, or problem solve with others in the animal welfare field who are, you know, real people? Look no further than Maddie's Pet Forum. Maddie's Pet Forum brings people of animal welfare together with the common goal to keep more people and pets together. We share ideas, expertise, offer each other support, resources, and more. Visit forum.maddiespetforum.org slash cats. Maddie's Pet Forum. Come for an answer. Stay for the community. So and we're we're in the fall here of 2022. And, you know, I know pandemic issues are up and down, but we are entering into another holiday season. I'm thinking I have my daughter, my niece, both have cats. I'm thinking maybe I should get this for them for a holiday gift. What do you think about that idea? That's a great idea. There's no better gift than the gift of assurance to know that your loved one will be cared for. There's nothing better than that. It's very easy. You've got in the front, you've got your address where the pets live, the number and type of pets you have. In my case, it's four cats. And on the flip side, my trusted contact. Or in the alternative, you can write down, my cat is insulin dependent or requires, in my case, I had a cat who was insulin dependent, metformin dependent, and on Norbask. That was the cat, Fally B, with whom I shared my life in Fairbanks. So all of those issues, anything you want can be put on that tag. It's, it's, it's critical. This way you assure and you can sleep at night. You don't have to have that, that horrible thought of what if I never came home? Now we're in the colder period of the year. Black ice is a real phenomenon. I have a friend who was getting the Wall Street Journal at the bottom of the driveway for her husband and she, she shattered her ankle irreparably. It could have been her head too. What if you're living alone with your pets and you go to the bottom of the driveway, you hit black ice, you fracture your skull. Right. Things happen, unfortunately, really very, very much, unfortunately. And I think it's really, really important. I think this is an incredible idea that you have. And, you know, what other things, obviously you have a trusted friend. So I would assume you would recommend that we talk to that trusted friend before we put them on the pendant. Um, and you've been showing it. It's not that big. It's not a very big item. It's the size of a quarter. It's the yeah. size of a quarter. It's very portable. It's the size of a quarter. It's, it's very user friendly. My friend has the key to my house. I make sure that she does that. She even knows how to turn the house alarm off, which is very important. Yep. She knows where everything is. And, and even so, even though my cats know Auntie Katya very well, and they know she's a cat lady. She took photographs of them. So I'd be assured that they were being cared for, but they were scared. They said, okay, here's Auntie Katya, but where's mommy? Can I ask you a follow-up question too? Is it important or helpful for us, for our veterinarians to also have this designated person's name sort of on file or, or anything like that? I think that? that's a good idea. Just as we would for ourselves. When you go see a doctor, the first thing they're going to ask is emergency contact. In fact, when my friend's sons were of school age, they're now out in the workforce in their 30s. But when they were in high school and junior high, I was their emergency contact. And there's an honor to that, you know. When my friend Katya said, do you mind I put you down at the emergency contact? They said, I'm honored. You've made me a part of your family. And so it works both ways. Now she's my contact. Right. With your family, obviously, the, the cats are your family, right? With my children. Yeah. Oh. Is there any other advice that you would uh, recommend folks do? Should they have their listing of medications, like have an organized section for Absolutely. all of their stuff in their houses, the food? What does Freddie get? What does Sally get? All that kind of stuff. I mean, I have to say, I was not the most organized of cat owners. And I had basically the cat drawer, <laughs> you know, and there was a hodgepodge and only I knew who liked what and when and how. And then when I did have a pet sitter come to the house or a cat sitter, I kind of had to figure it out at that point in time. Is it I would assume it would be better to be a little bit more proactive and more organized and, and have some of that information already put together sort of in a folder. 
Well, I go back again to one of your previous podcasts. Having a dog prepares you for children. Having a cat prepares you for having teenagers. If, if anything, their tastes change. Um, there was one time when, when Sweet Roy liked seafood stew better than anything. Now he switched to pate kitten chicken. Ruthie, Ruthie used to like uh, chicken pasta tomato, and now she likes just plain chicken rice. So they have their own, their own tastes, but basically we use the pro plan palette. They have their favorite toys, but I do have things marked. I have Vittles vaults and each Vittles vault is marked with the contents. I have things pretty much delineated. They're young now, they're four years old, about that, about four, they'll be four soon, approximate age. They don't have any health issues yet. The only problem is Harley doesn't like to be combed, but I have some special gloves that have rubber on the top. So if you need to comb Harley, you put those on. I've got the, um, he's got long fur. It's a comb with tines called a honeycomb. Mm. And I comb, but he can't bite on top of rubber. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But now when I work with him, I know what to do. I look at him and I see his eyes get black and he moves his head around like this. I say, no teeth, no teeth. I don't want to see your teeth. No teeth. And, and everyone knows that. They, they're particular about that. They're aware of these things. They know about the cat litter that I used and how you can flush the poop. But ultimately, you've got to change the feline pine from each of the containers. They know that. But the most important thing I would say is to introduce your caregiver. Not just give the caregiver the key, but introduce the caregiver. So just as it's a good idea to leave the carriers open, the cats know the caregiver. Oh, mm. this is Uncle George, or this is Auntie Katya. And so there's not that fear factor, which, as you know, is deleterious to the workings of the system. You go into emergency mode, not just you, but your pets. Correct. Right. If, they, if someone comes in and they have no sense of familiarity, that's a big, big problem, big challenge. Yeah. It's important that they, that they know, too, that they know the program, that they know the cats, and that the cats know them so that it's not a big shock. They'll wonder where you are, but at least they have the comfort of knowing who the caregiver is. And that's very, very important. Janice, if folks are interested in getting the Save My Pet ID tag, how would they find out more details about it? I have a website and it's all one word. It's save, S-A-V-E, no spaces, M-Y, no, no space, pet, P-E-T, no space, ID, no space, T-A-G.com. All lowercase, save my pet ID tag.com. That's the website. And they can order the bracelet, the necklace, and the keychain. And we've even got some apparel. Excellent. That's wonderful. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners today, Janice? Just that I'm very grateful to have been invited on the podcast again. And I'm delighted to be able to share this information with everyone. Because ultimately, if people now can adopt pets in impunity, knowing that they're not selfish, if they're not going to be home, and that the only ones, there will be no more homeless pets. There will be no more homeless pets. People will want the cats they take in. They won't be returning them to the shelters. They will be keeping them. And that's it. That's so important for them and for us. We're meant to have them. We're meant to be together. Yeah, and for sure. And, and, and even on a flip side, too, doesn't even have to be for your own pets. It could be for a colony of cats you take care of and you're responsible for, too. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. They depended on you. Yeah. I have a friend who's retired recently, and I give her some money every month because she said, I can't shut them out. I can't just shut them out. And I draw a picture of a cat smiling on the check and say, These are, this is for your outdoor kids. It's, it's so important. You, you can't shut them out. No, no. And that's can't. important for, for a colony that you care for. They're waiting for you. They're depending on you. Right. And we're a community and we should be supporting each other and helping each other and understanding each other. And, you know, if there is somebody out there feeding a colony of cats and they feel like that there's nobody able to help them, you know, we have to work to build community, Absolutely. build support. You know. Absolutely. Um, I need to share with you a very sweet story. I recently partnered with, um, with uh, Father John's Animal House in Sussex, where I live. And uh, I got to go for a tour and I almost 
came home with several other cats. And there was one room, one of my friends with whom I work out had was able to successfully capture a mama cat and four kittens. The fifth kitten was seduced by the colony to remain wild. But the four kittens and the mama kitten turned up at Father John's. And as I was able to pet them, and there was a little one who came up to my throat and began to knead and kiss me. And I was saying, oh, no, I know I'm going to walk home with this cat. I know it. I know it. But is it for me or for my, my family? How will they react? So not wanting to upset the balance, I, I, I pulled myself away from this beautiful kitten. Turns out my other friends, I have many friends in the area, are adopting two from that litter. So I'm going to get them again. I'm going to get those kittens again. They're going to be a part of my life. That sounds great. Thank you. I was able to bring them to toys and some kitten food just yesterday. Oh, that's great. Janice, it's been wonderful uh, hanging out with you and finding out more about the Save My Pet ID tag. I just think it's a phenomenal idea, simple yet elegant and so incredibly practical. So thank you so very much, Janice, for spending the day with me today. And I hope we'll have you on again in the future. You sure will. Count on it. Thank you, Stacy. That's it for this week. Please head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. We love to hear what you think, and a five-star review really helps others find the show. You can also join the conversation with listeners, cat caretakers, and me on Facebook and Instagram. And don't forget to hit follow or subscribe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss a single show. Thanks for listening, and thank you for everything that you do to help create a safe and healthy world for cats.